Hey guys, welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be making some budget-friendly farmhouse home decor. Let's get started. For this first DIY, I have this blank sign. I picked this up from Dollar General on clearance, um, but Dollar Tree has similar ones and so does Walmart and Hobby Lobby. So wherever you can find one. I'm just pulling off the hanger in the back because I don't need that. I'm just going to use this sign as a leaner. And I'm trying the candle wax chippy paint look method. I've done this before a couple of times and I feel like I have some room for improvement here, but I'm going to show you what I did. So you're going to take a white candle, uh, wax, white candle, because that is wax, and we're going to rub this on different parts of our sign. Now I feel like I should be a little bit more purposeful where I choose to put it but that's okay. You're going to see how it all comes together. So you're going to rub that wherever you don't want the paint to come off. Now in my mind, or where you do want the paint to come off. So in my mind, I was thinking, I like this white base. I want some of this white to come through, but I ended up making white my top coat as well. So I probably should have done that differently, but nonetheless, you're going to rub the wax on where you want it. It's just a cheap candle from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going over with blue. This is a uh, called ocean from Waverly Chalk Paint. And I did do some wax on the edges as well. And we're gonna just give this a nice coat and let that dry. Now, because of the wax, we're not gonna use our heat gun to let it dry. I'm just gonna let it air dry in between. And then I'm going back with more of the candle wax and we're gonna apply it in some more places. You can kind of see where it's already previously been applied. So I'm trying to do it in different spots. And you can do as many colors, as many layers as you want. I don't know that more than like four, well, I don't know, I guess depending on the size of the piece. I mean, you can do this on like furniture and everything too. So I don't know, maybe there's no limit. But now our next color is going to be brown. I'm just using an acrylic brown paint that I had on hand. Once again, giving that just one smooth coat, um, not going over the top as far as like, you know, a ton of it, just one really good coat. And then we're gonna let that naturally dry. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much. It helps YouTube know that someone likes my video and the more people that do that, the more they're thinking, oh, maybe someone else is gonna like this video. So it helps me out because then I know what you like, but it also helps YouTube wanna push my video out, which of course helps me out. All right, so while brown was dry, we're going back in with some more candle wax and we're gonna do a top coat of white. I did end up doing two coats of the white and I also went around the back to just touch up any spots where I would kind of gotten paint back there just to make it look a little bit cleaner. If you are new to my channel, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Leanne and I enjoy sharing budget-friendly DIYs here on this channel and if you're new, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Now that all of our painting is done, I am going to go on with my heat gun to soften up the wax. I've never done it this way before, but I had read somewhere about doing that. You can also use a hair dryer. And then I'm going in and I'm trying to scrape off the paint. And the idea is that it's gonna come off in different layers based on where you're putting, where you put your wax. So I am trying to scrape off the wax. I also did go back in between the grooves. There was some wax there, but I also just wanted to kind of scrape that down. And I'm just kind of heating it up a section and scraping it. I don't know if the Heating it up helped. This is the first time I've done it that way, but when I read that, I was like, well, I mean, I guess that makes sense that it would be easier that way, but I don't know. I can, I don't, I don't know. Let me know. Have you tried that method? Have you tried this chippy look method using the candle wax? I would love to hear any tips and pointers if you have some. And then once I was done scraping, I also went in with some sandpaper and I just smoothed out any of the edges where the different layers were, just smoothed it all out. And then if I thought I saw another spot where there was wax, I went in and scraped it again. And we're going for an old like barn wood type look. So you really can't go wrong with just hacking away at it. That's how I view it anyway. I went in with a baby wipe just to wipe off any of the dust and chip, chipped paint pieces. And then went in with some DIY wax, clear wax to just seal that in. You could also use some Mod Podge but I'm just applying that with an old scrap of a t-shirt. And then for the sign, I have this home word, this wood word. I think this is from the Dollar Tree, but once again, you can get these at Walmart, 
and Hobby Lobby and probably other craft stores. I don't really get into like Michael's or Joanne Fabrics much, but we're gonna stain that with some antique wax and using a baby wipe. And then we're gonna just use a little bit of hot glue to apply that to the front. I just put it on several places where it was easy to get the hot glue, press that down. And that is it for this one. It's a pretty uh, easy one as far, or simple I suppose, as far as um, all of the pieces involved, but the chippy look technique was a fun one to try again, cause it's been a while. This next one is a house sign from Dollar Tree that I previously DIY'd, but it came as a chalkboard front and the wood frame was just a plain natural wood that you could see when I flipped it over. So I am just going to redo this. So we're gonna give the middle section a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color white and just kind of trying to have as minimal brush strokes as possible. Sorry, my head kind of pops in and out sometimes while I'm working because I get really focused and then uh, the camera goes out of focus for a second. And then I am doing a couple coats. So I'm using my heat gun. I try to do it on a cool setting when I'm drying paint and just um, going to let that, that dry before I do the other coat. And then my head really gets in the way here, but just for a minute, I'm gonna show you, I'm painting the perimeter of the house sign with some black paint. And I'm just using a small angle brush because I didn't want to tape anything off, but I did, I did want to just be careful to not get any black onto the freshly painted white uh, center of the surface. So whatever colors you want. Once again, this came in a chalkboard uh, background and a natural wood frame. And then I am gonna go ahead and clean up the back and paint back there as well. So I'm gonna pull off my little hanger because we're not gonna use this. This is once again, just gonna be a leaner sign. Now this piece did not come out as good as I wanted it to, but I've really been trying to work through my stash. So I decided to leave this DIY in the video because I do like the idea of it. I just think that there's ways that it could be done that it would look a little bit better, but I didn't wanna scrap the whole DIY. Once everything is painted and dried, I'm going in with some sandpaper to rough it up a little bit. This is obviously completely optional. If you're not into that rustic look, then you don't have to do that. But I wanted to pull out some of the lighter color on the house, and then I did go across the whole front part as well, just to smooth out any brush strokes. I really wasn't trying to like take any layers of paint off there, but I did want to clean it up. So these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree I have had in my stash forever. So this is where it didn't go as planned, but I'm gonna just explain it to you. First of all, these transfers transfer really, really easily. Some of them don't. The gold ones from Dollar Tree, mm -mm, no go. These ones transferred too good because the one piece came off and then it got stuck to my finger and it got stuck to the sheet. And there you go, I lost that number. So <laughs> it, it works really good. So the reason I don't like this one is because I don't, I can't decide if the different fonts of the letters is cool and quirky or if it just looks a mess. <laughs> so let me know what you think down in the comments. I think it would look better if the font was all the same. You could use rub-on transfers. You could use stickers. You could use stencils. You could use your crickets. I chose three dates that were relevant to us. You can do birthdays, anniversaries, um, birthdays of all of your children, whatever you want to do. But um, I picked three dates and they both, they all happen to just have two digits, just, just kind of how it worked out. And so I am transferring these letter or these numbers on. I'm using a little pair of tweezers to help place these. These, like I said, transferred incredibly easily. Um, and then I like to just use the little bottom sheet to help me pick up the plastic top sheet because sometimes it's hard to grab it. And then I had this other transfer set also from Dollar Tree and it had these little stars kind of, uh, asterisks, asterisks only, almost. Wow, that was really hard to say. Um, but I use those for a decimal point. You could also go in with a Sharpie or like I said, if you have a Cricut or a stencil, whatever you want to do but I thought that was just kind of cute there. And then this transfer sheet as well that I had also had a little heart on it, so I placed that on the top. And that was all I did for this one. I've seen these on signs and pillows, where it's just like significant dates for your family. Usually it's like birthdays or something, but let me know what you think. I like the idea of it. I don't know that I love the 
quirkiness of the different types of font in the numbers. Even if you don't like that, you can still take this idea and do your own thing. For this final DIY, I have this wood crate from the Dollar Tree. I got this a long time ago and it was really random. It was the only one I ever saw. It is far bigger than the other wooden crates, but you can get them at various places. So wherever you can find a wood crate or just do a smaller one. But I'm going to give it a dry brush of white. I had already painted the outside, I think for a previous DIY, um, but I wanted to make sure that the whole thing was done. So I'm just going in and we're going to just, it's a, it's a heavy dry brush. It's not like a, it's actually not a dry brush. That's not the good description of it, but it's a messy coat. I wanted the wood to peek through and I picked a kind of a rougher paintbrush and that helped out a lot. And then I didn't have to go back and sand it down, which is also an option to get that paint look as well if you want. I did go ahead and paint the bottom as well, even though that's not gonna be seen, but you know, you're gonna get a crate and paint this. Now, originally my idea was to use more of those rub-on transfer numbers, but I really wanted this to all look um, unified. So I ended up using some Dollar Tree stickers that you can see here. These are from, yeah, I said Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree stickers. And I'm once again gonna use my little tweezers. I recently got these, I think when we got like a cell phone repair or something or other, but I snagged them for my crafting area. But um, I'm using a ruler to just kind of get them centered. And I, this is when I realized, I think I had previously, sorry, my head keeps getting in the way. It will get better. But I think I had previously must have Mod Podge the front of this and that's why they weren't sticking super great. So it took me a little bit to, to get them in place and get into a groove. But I decided to put like a farm name, an established year, and I just went on to Pinterest and I found a site that listed a bunch of different like farm names, farmhouse business names, those kinds of things. Like they were ideas, they weren't like actual farms. And I just kind of pieced one together from there. I didn't actually take one of the examples. I just, I landed with Happy Acres Farm and I like that. As you can see, when I was pressing down the stickers, I tore one of them. But we got these back in place. I was able to line up the nine so you couldn't tell. And it was 1924, so it's a 100-year-old farm. That's just the idea that popped into my head. And then, of course, I didn't want the stickers to look like stickers, and I didn't want it to look like that was fresh and new. So I very lightly dry brushed with some white paint. I do end up building on it to get it a little bit more white. I'm being very careful because these stickers were not sticking super great only because there was a Mod Podge layer underneath from a previous DIY. I've had great success with these stickers in the past. They also come in red and green. And then I went over it with some Mod Podge because I really needed some help to stick down those letters. But I thought this was a really cute idea and you could use it just empty. I do show it here displayed in just a second with some florals, but I also might just use it in my decor totally empty, um, but you could, I mean, you could put anything you wanted in it too. You could use it for like practical storage of some kind as you as well, but that's it for this DIY. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up because that helps me out so much for many reasons for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're new here and you liked what you saw today, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. There's no cost. It's free to you if you're not familiar with how YouTube works. But if you subscribe and turn on the notification bell, we'll make sure that YouTube lets you know the next time I post a video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.